Hi everybody, this is Jonathan Scott of the Big Cat People, Angie behind the camera, and still in lockdown mode. We're headed, well, we came into this mode just when we were about to go off on safari to Tanzania in mid-March, and we're still at home in Nairobi, longing to go back to the Mara, which we certainly will at some point. And uh, obviously we encourage you to come and join us on safari in this extraordinary part of the world, but at home in Nairobi. And this is going to be some of our top tips for photography. And so to begin with, I just want to sort of talk a little bit about how you grow, if you're interested in photography and you start to take pictures, then the big thing really, if you want to be a better photographer, you need to be taking pictures every day. You need to be actually looking for the shot looking for that decisive moment that Cartier-Bresson talked about, that moment when geometry and timing, that moment in time, which can last a fraction of a second. But as you become more attuned to thinking as a photographer, to seeing as a photographer, I mean, to be quite honest, I am constantly, and thank goodness I keep an iPhone in my pocket most of the time, but because I'm just constantly seeing something I want to record. And you could say, well, why not just be happy walking around, enjoying the big view, immersing yourself in your environment. And we've got a wonderful garden here and I'm endlessly going around, but I love nothing better than when I've got, when I know I've got something it could be your iPhone, it could be a point and shoot, it could be, you know, one of your bigger cameras, but whatever it is, that I've got something that allows me to capture the moment. And the beauty of photography is, and Angie and I were just talking about this over lunch, is rather like if you draw, like both Angie and I do, and how relaxing is that? If you draw or if you take photographs, you begin to see more clearly. You begin to notice detail. And you could say, well, yes, but you know, what are you going to photograph right now? We're in lockdown mode. Well, our friend David Newton, what did he do? During lockdown, where you could move around your local community, so you, this was at a point where you didn't have to be absolutely indoors, but you could socially distance, he started to take pictures of his neighbors by their front door at a safe distance. And he got some one, and, and you know, what a learning experience in terms of, well, how do you approach portraiture and making people in what could seem like a mundane setting, their front door, you know, well, you look for colorful doors. You look for a mix of people, parents with children. Uh, another great friend of ours, Jan Artus Patron, the great French photographer, Earth from Above, the helicopter pilot or the person who does so much work from the air. I remember him doing a wonderful series on people and their pets, their cats and their dogs, and also people with their animals, which they loved, farmers with their sheep or their goats or their cows or their horses. And it was extraordinary how you saw these wonderful sort of resonance between the person and the animal that they loved. And it was very strange because often, intentionally or not, they almost seemed to take on some of the character of their subject. So I would challenge you during lockdown to not say to yourself, but I want to go on safari to the Mara. I want to take big cats. You know, what's here isn't enough. No. Take this opportunity, get your flash out for a start. Start shooting some flash. Start filling in the light creatively with a flash off the camera or on the camera. And just experimenting, filling in a little bit of extra light to give you the shot you want. Do a little bit of macro photography. And as I say, it could be just with your iPhone. And but the big thing is, as you walk around, and this is such, if you take nothing away with you than this today, it's keep your eyes open. Because what I think I've noticed is that because of the speed at which we live, 
Because we are no longer hunter-gatherers out there having to identify every flower and berry and every food opportunity looking keenly like those naturalists that they were because it was going to cost you your life if you didn't identify the opportunity for food. You need, but, but what has happened is as we've moved and transitioned away from the necessity to be out in nature because our lives depended on it more viscerally, more obviously than it does today, we still depend on nature, but a lot of us are in houses. We're in cities. We're cut off from that little bit of green. But what I would say is that as you start to look and identify and see, you will understand more clearly what has happened to us in our day-to-day -day existence, which is our brain can simply not cope with everything we see. Translating it into something which stops you and thinks, oh, there's a bus, here's a person, there's Joe Bloggs, here's a cat, there's a dog. It becomes peripheral to your main aim, which is from getting from your house to your work. You're probably going to bury your face into a newspaper. Put your earphones in, cut off the, you know, shut yourself off from the world. But start actually reacquainting yourself with what is right in front of your nose. I defy you to walk 10 yards, whether it's in your house or outside. And if it's outside, watch the light, the play of the light on your subject and how it varies, whether it's high or low, backlit, side lit, how you want to use the light. And when I say use the light, you can use the light by moving your position to have the light give a different effect. But 10 yards, you could make it 10 feet. I mean, I'm looking around me right here and I'm seeing books, I'm seeing flowers, I'm seeing statues, I'm seeing all kinds of things which if I was actually to pique my imagination, to actually turn on that let's get imaginative, let's start to be creative, I could find something to photograph. And that is the big thing. Find something to photograph, find something which pleases the eye, and then see how you can translate it with your own personal vision. Because as I said on today's Instagram, um, beautiful black and white picture of two male lions, which Angie posted today. And I had mentioned the fact that really, you know, everything is out there on, on offer in terms of photography. And it's the limit of your creativity, of your imagination, which will be the truth as to whether or not, it'll be the bottom line as to whether or not you can turn something ordinary and a lot of what you see could look ordinary until you get the light right, until you get closer. I mean, when did you last go up to a plant and look carefully at the wonder of the veins on the leaf of a tree, of a plant? And I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm looking out onto my veranda here and there's just, Angie's got this wonderful potted plants, you know, quite apart from what's in the garden itself. And it's just magical. And the excitement, the thrill, the fun that you can have seeing, identifying, capturing pictures. I mean, yesterday I nearly fell smack on my face because I noticed I came in through the garden and there was little cat sitting. The light was exquisite. There were ferns, these fingers, green fingers, hanging down, sort of surrounding her. And I tried not to catch her attention because I knew jolly well. Little cat, she figures if I even look at her, okay, time for a little bit of, you know, let's talk. So I thought I'm going to get past her, act like I didn't really see her, that she didn't look beautiful, she didn't catch my attention, to go to my study to get my phone. By the time I came out, she was walking in towards me. I missed the shot. And you could say, well, so what? But the joy in being a photographer. So that idea of just keep taking a photo every single day. I think I've mentioned to you before, the great wildlife photographer from the United States, Jim Brandenburg, the man who captured those white wolves. Magical images. I opened the National Geographic magazine. Google Jim Brandenburg, white wolves. 
get ready for a spectacle. There was a shot of an ice face carved ice and snow. And there, in a spotlight of light, was one single white wolf. My first thought, sorry, Jim, where was the helicopter? Where was the, the flashlight to light? Because it was perfection. But that's what being a wildlife photographer is about. It's deciding what the story is, figuring out where the story is, deciding how you're going to approach it as a photographer, doing your research work, using your imagination to create the possibility of the images you're going to take, not just waiting for something to stand up and jump right in front of you. That's not being a photographer. Yeah, you could say, well, it is, you know, capture it, you've got to be quick, got to be fast. Yes, okay, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So Jim Brandenburg, anyway, White Wolves, stunning. Jim Brandenburg set himself a challenge of taking a single picture every day for a year. He said, look, I've been traveling all over the world endlessly in search of great images. And he got to a certain age or a certain point in his profession where he thought, you know what? It's staring me right under my nose. It's here. He obviously had a beautiful landscape, a beautiful wilderness close to his home that he could move out to where there was water, where there were trees, where there was greenery, where there was wildlife and the discipline. So just try that. Why not try that? One picture a day, because now you're going to have to think, am I going to save the opportunity to take a picture later because I think the sun's going to be in a better position. I've sort of checked out what it is I think I might photograph. I've seen the opportunity, a tree, a plant, a cat, a dog, whatever it might be, a big cat, a leopard, but I'm going to be disciplined. I'm not just going to snap away. I'm going to think, how can I, how can I create something magical? And so for 365 days, he took one picture a day and he created a book of it and it was beautiful. But what an exquisite discipline to actually make you focus on, I'm not going to just stick my finger on the button at 14 frames a second. Yeah, do that. If a cheetah's tasting a gazelle, you want every shot in the bag. But be selective. I remember in Antarctica, the wonderful I'm going to try and I, I'm always going to say Morgan Freeman, but it wasn't Morgan Freeman, as wonderful as that man's voice is. It was Freeman Patterson. We were on an Antarctic trip. It might even have been an Arctic trip. It was that long ago. And he was along. So again, Google Freeman Patterson. And he was this man in the same scenario we were. We were running around like headless chickens, just overawed. Let's say it was Antarctica. Penguins everywhere, seals, what are we going to, going to cover the whole thing. And here was this man, I think he might even have been wearing black, who barely moved, who just stood there, taking in everything and using that critical eye to look around him and just very carefully, God, it was perfection. It was in the days when you could still hear a shutter click. He would press the shutter. And later he would show us the images and he's got some wonderful books and you know all kinds of things to challenge yourself with to be more creative it's all about seeing and you only see if you keep your eyes open and you start to concentrate and look next time you think you're just walking out to the car and it's only about getting from the front door to the car remember you're going to be passing some miracles of design and construct natural or unnatural, possible photographs. Enjoy it. All the best. Take care.